Hi, I'm William Spaniel. Let's learn some game theory. Today we're going to go over commitment problems, and I think commitment problems are one of the most important, if not the most important thing that we get out of subgame perfect equilibrium. And moreover, it's very important that you know what's going on with commitment problems and understand this whole thing, because when we start using game theory to look at real world situations, to analyze real world situations, what we'll see is that commitment problems show up all over the place there. So it's very important that you understand what's going on here. And actually that dovetails nicely with the game that we're gonna be looking at today. And I, I should say that I do get a lot of emails and comments on the YouTube account about how, well, you know, where do we actually use game theory? How is game theory going to help us out in our everyday lives? And I understand where these uh, questions and where these emails are coming from because, well, I agree. If we can't actually use game theory for something useful, well, then we're just essentially doing math for math's sake, and that's pretty boring, and, you know, it's not worthwhile. So we got to actually be able to answer, where is this game theory going to help us out? And I actually have a story for this. It dates back to last summer, so I guess about seven or eight months now ago. I was driving across the country from San Diego to Rochester, uh, which is where I'm at now. I'm at Rochester, I was living in San Diego. I had to drive across country to get to Rochester, of course. And over the course of my journey while I was passing through Texas, I got pulled over by the police, some Texas Rangers, in fact. And the situation I encountered was perfect for someone who understands game theory and understands credible commitments. And of course, these commitment problems that we're gonna be talking about. And so I used my knowledge of game theory to get the best uh, actual plausible outcome I could expect to get given my constraints. And someone who doesn't understand game theory and doesn't, doesn't understand commitment problems or credible commitments might not actually have made this optimal move and it might have caused them a lot of trouble as a result. So I'm gonna teach you what I did and teach you the situation, tell you about the situation and allow you to think about what happened or what you would do in this situation. So I got pulled over by the Rangers and the rangers were thoroughly convinced that I was a drug dealer or I just had some sort of uh, marijuana or a pot in my car because I'm from California and, well, everyone from California has pot in their car. And so the ranger offered me this. He said, well, you know, I'm pretty suspicious of you, so I would like your permission to conduct a quick search of your vehicle. That way I can find out if my suspicion is right, and if not, that, well, you can be on your way. And I told him that he has absolutely no authorization from me to search my vehicle and that it would be illegal, it would be an illegal search if he did search my vehicle, so under absolutely no conditions would I authorize any sort of search of my vehicle. And we had a bit of a debate about whether this was in fact legal for him to search my car and it was quite apparent that he knew that he couldn't search my car without my permission uh, because I was right, he didn't have any reasonable cause to search my vehicle. But he was very insistent, he started to try to bargain with me over this. Uh, he was trying to say, well, you know, you really want to let me do this, this quick search of your car because the alternative is that we can just wait for a canine unit to arrive and the canine unit can sniff around your car. I don't need any sort of special uh, warrant to do that sort of thing. So the dog can do this. And well, that's going to be pretty bad for both of us because we're going to be waiting around for the dog to arrive. It's about a half an hour away. And that's just not as good as this other alternative, this, uh, this outcome where if you just let me search your, your car very quickly, it'll be a very quick search. Well, if you're innocent, you can be on your way very quickly and it'll just be better than if we waited for this dog to arrive. So that was the situation I was in. And rather than just taking the situation at face value, I put on my game theory hat and started thinking about what I should do in this situation given my constraints. So I want you to think about my story just really quickly and think about what you would do in this situation. So I'm gonna just pause right now and let you think about that for a second. Okay, so it's very important when you're in a strategic situation to understand what the strategic situation is. So you want to ideally be able to think about this in your head as, well, a game tree. So here's the game tree that we were in. I have two choices. I can wait for the canine unit to arrive, or I can allow a search to happen. If I allow a search to happen, well, the ranger can do one of two things. He can make a quick search, as he said he would do, or, well, once he has my permission, he can actually conduct a thorough search, and there's really nothing I can do legally about that. Once I give up my uh, authorization for a search, it's really up to him to conduct whatever kind of search that he wants to, to conduct. And I have put these payoffs here to represent uh, the way, uh, the preferences uh, that we have over these outcomes. So my best outcome is for the ranger to conduct a quick search because he'll find nothing and he'll be able to get on my way very quickly. My next best outcome is to wait a half an hour for that canine unit to arrive. The canine unit will sniff around, find nothing, and let me go. 
And my worst outcome is to allow the ranger to conduct a thorough search of my vehicle because, well, my car contains absolutely everything I own, it's packed full of stuff, and if the ranger conducts a thorough search of my car, it's going to take a very long time, it's going to be very tedious, he's going to tear apart my car, and it's just going to be very frustrating to me. So that's my worst outcome, that's why it's a 1. And of course my best outcome, as I said, is for the ranger to conduct a quick search. Now, the ranger has the following preferences. He really wants to conduct a thorough search of my vehicle. That way, he can be absolutely sure that what I'm saying is in fact true and that I'm not a drug dealer. And he could catch me, of course, if I were a drug dealer. Now, his best, next best outcome is to do a quick search because this allows him to get into my vehicle still, which is good for him. And of course, he doesn't have to wait a half an hour to have that canine unit arrive. He can just get it done quickly and get on with his life quickly one way or the other. And the worst outcome for him is to wait for the K9 unit to arrive and spend 30 minutes in the hot side and essentially doing nothing. So that's the situation, that's the preferences of the actors, that's what you need to think about in your head. You need to think about what is the strategic situation am I in, what are the moves available to both players, and what are the preferences that the players have over these outcomes. And that's what I was doing here, that's what I came up with um, when I was in this situation. So we're going to solve the game like we did any other game. We're going to use backward induction, and we're going to start with what happens if I allow the ranger to search. And, well, that gives him two options. He can either do a quick search or a thorough search. And if we isolate the ranger's payoffs, we see that a thorough search gives him three points, whereas a quick search only gives him two. So if I ever do allow the ranger to search, he will be thorough, and we will get to this outcome here. So given that, we can just... Uh, darken off that quick, ignore it for now, and compare these two outcomes right here. So if I allow the ranger to search, he'll be thorough, I'll get one point, or I can wait for the canine unit to get two points. The canine unit is worth better, worth more points for me, two is better than one, so I will just wait for the canine unit, and that's our subgame perfect equilibrium. I wait for the canine unit to arrive, I get two points, and the ranger gets one. So why is this interesting? Why do we care about this? What is a commitment problem? And so forth. Well. Compare this outcome here to this outcome down here. If I allow a search and the ranger conducts a quick search, what we see is that this outcome down here is better for both of us. This is really inefficient and it hurts both of us to get to this outcome. The reason, of course, is that I have a three here, I only have a two here, and the ranger has a two here and only a one here. We both prefer this outcome to this outcome. The question is, how do we get stuck here instead of here? And that's this idea of a commitment problem. If a ranger ever gets a chance to move, he's going to conduct the thorough search. That's just what his preference is. He wants to conduct the thorough search over the quick search. And so we end up with this outcome if I allow the search to be conducted. But, of course, I'm not going to want that. I'm just to wait for this K9 unit to arrive, and we're going to be stuck up here. So in an ideal world, what the ranger would want to do is have a quick search of my vehicle. He would want to be able to credibly commit to that quick search of my vehicle. If he could somehow just promise uh, contractually or obligate himself under the law to just stick to that quick search, well, we'll actually get to this better outcome. The problem is that he can't credibly commit, commit to this. He has a commitment problem. We both know that if we ever get in the situation, we end up here and that means we can't actually feasibly arrive at this outcome down here, even though we would both want to. And so that's this idea of a commitment problem. If you can't credibly commit to a, arriving at a certain outcome, well, that outcome might as well not exist for the players uh, functionally, and that's what we saw when we crossed out this outcome, because we knew that this just wasn't functionally possible. The ranger wouldn't allow this to happen. He would end up instead uh, with the thorough search. And so, as a result, we get to this inefficient outcome. This outcome that we both don't really like very much. And that's this idea of a commitment problem in game theory, is that we can end up at these bad outcomes despite the fact that neither one of us really likes these bad outcomes, and we would actually prefer a different outcome instead. So that's the moral of the story. Uh, you should only focus on what's credibly possible, uh, and what actors can cred credibly commit to do, and moreover, you just shouldn't let police officers search your vehicle under any circumstances. That's my two cents. I hope you understand commitment problems and join me later when we, can, when we look at something else uh, regarding backward induction and subgame perfection. I'll see you then.